Let's talk adding tens, subtracting tens, adding one hundreds, and subtracting a hundreds. So you'll find on pages 53 and 54 a lot of practice pages that looks like this. A lot of practice problems, sorry. Um, I also noticed that on page 59, oops, I kind of erased part of that. We all make mistakes, don't we? On page 59, you have a grid that has you counting by hundreds and by tens. It could be kind of helpful for you to look at a thousands grid to do this. So if you are having trouble with this activity, go ahead and scoot forward to page 59, do the grid, and it'll help you figure this out. But for now, if I have a number like 840, let's start with adding 10, subtracting 10. My tens place is 840. Now you might go, I have to count by tens in the 800s? I don't know how to do that. Well, you can count by tens lower down, right? So if you can go 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, hey, you have the skills to do it this way. We just have the 800 there. So 840, the next 10 would be 850. Now same on the way down, we have 850, 840, what'll be 10 less? 830. The changes are in my tens place. Now with the hundreds, I'm going to subtract 100 or add 100. If I'm counting by hundreds, I'm looking at my hundreds place. Counting by hundreds would mean starting at 100, 200, 300, 400, you get the pattern. So in which case, if I'm at 850, what's my next 100? 900, and then the 10 stays the same. If I'm going backwards, 940, 840, what would be 100 less than that? 740. So that's how you do this activity. This also makes it a lot easier when you're thinking about math and life. If you're adding and subtracting by hundreds, you don't need to write anything down. You can just do it mentally by being able to jump by tens, jump by hundreds, forwards and backwards.